Okay, so um, we're going to talk about energy flow through ecosystems and uh, I think the one thing that you all know is that all the energy in on the planet that's fixed into organic molecules, the energy ultimately derives from the sun. This provides light energy. So that's transferred to plants, which fix it by the process of photosynthesis. And obviously we know absolutely everything there is to know about photosynthesis. There's nothing left. We know all about Kelvin cycle and light harvesting. Um, and then that energy is then passed on to uh, herbivores. Oh, can't spell. Herbivores. And then on to various carnivores. You sort of top up to A level, I suppose, from that um, is that we refer to these as being plants as being producers. Herbivores are then primary consumers. So here we're talking about food chains and on to secondary and higher consumers. And of course then our other bit of sort of A-level knowledge is that we refer to these as feeding levels. So producers are on trophic level one and then we go up to trophic level two, trophic level three and so forth. <coughs> And we will talk a little bit more about food chains and losses of energy. But let's just deal with this first sort of transfer, this one that's going from the sun into the producers. So this is the uh, diagram from the booklet, with apologies to whoever owns the copyright on that. And uh, here we see a little diagram representing that energy transfer. So here we've got our solar energy, our photons of light, and they're coming down and they're hitting a leaf. But obviously not all of that light, and perhaps not obviously, uh, not all of the light is going to be used in photosynthesis. So some of it just simply isn't going to be absorbed because it's just not the right wavelength. So all those sorts of greens and, you know, parts of the yellow and orange are just really not used. Um, and so that is solar energy coming in that is not available to be used in photosynthesis. We've then also got leaves that have got fairly shiny surfaces because of the waxy cuticle and some of them just bounce the whole thing back off again. And we've got some energy that's transmitted. Now what I mean by transmitted is that it passes through the leaf and on its way through, randomly, uh, it doesn't hit a chloroplast in the palisade layer, it doesn't hit a chloroplast in the spongy mesophyll layer, and that whole spectrum of light then just goes straight through the leaves. Um, and I think we can be grateful for that. A walk in the woods just wouldn't be the same if there was absolutely no light getting through to the bottom whatsoever. So, there's our solar energy coming in. And the bits that are used in photosynthesis are used by the chloroplast. So this is a lovely chloroplast here and that solar energy is harvested by the chlorophyll and thylakoids and that generates ATP and uh, reduced NADP which is used in the Calvin cycle in the stroma and what the Calvin cycle does is it fixes carbon dioxide. So here this energy fixed is the stuff that's going to end up as glucose that fate of the triose phosphate that we're looking at there. So that would represent all of the light energy. So this energy in here is all of the light energy that has been fixed, that has been used to fix carbon dioxide into organic molecules. <coughs> and there are two main things that can happen to that. One is that it can be respired and it's going to therefore end up as heat in respiration and of course we're going to give back out our carbon dioxide 
And the other thing is it can be used to build new cell materials. So, we need to know two terms associated with that diagram. Let me just switch colours. I'll use green. Green for photosynthesis. So, um, the first term is uh, gross primary production. And this represents the rate at which carbon dioxide is fixed into organic molecules. Now bear in mind that some of that is then going to be respired, which leaves us with a net primary production. So this works like your tax. You get, you know, when you start earning you'll get a gross wage and then you'll have to give the government some and what you're left with to take home is your net wage. This is the same gross. This is what they've earned through photosynthesis. This is what they've um, given out in respiration and what they're left with is the net primary production. So this really represents the um, accumulation of biomass. So it's from the gross production. It's the stuff that's left after respiration. So that's the kind of stuff you need to learn. Obviously we can put that into an equation. So we could have you know, gross primary productivity equals net primary productivity plus respiration. That's these two things added together equal that. You might need to rearrange it. So net primary productivity is everything that you've fixed minus your respiratory losses. <coughs> um, doubt you'll have to rearrange it in terms of respiration but you do need to recognize uh, it from from diagrams you need to recognize which is gross and which is net so if you've got respiratory losses on then clearly what you've left within your box is the net primary productivity and we'll do some example calculations in another video I'm trying to keep it short here <laughs>